Hello everybody, it's uh, Sunday, May 5th, gorgeous day, we had a beautiful day yesterday and it's supposed to be nice again today, just thought I'd do a quick garden update. Here's the onions that I seeded, March 17th I seeded a bunch and then uh, I had a poor germination on some so I reseeded March 24th and uh, I found that some of them fried under their little dome so I seeded a few more on March 26th. I've never given these a haircut and you can see the size of them. They're ready to go in the garden right now. It's a little bit early. Probably won't put them out for two weeks, but that's what I got. I haven't given them a haircut. I just can't bring myself to do that for some reason. Anyway, I'll show everybody what's in the mobile greenhouse. The first row is Brussels sprouts. BS is Brussels sprouts. I uh, seeded uh, eight cells of them, and I got six of those came up. They were seeded on March 24th, so they're looking good. Also on March 24th, I seeded four Golden Cross early cabbages. I got one of those out of four came up, so one's better than none. And behind that is... Hercules, I got three of those out of four came up. That's a big cabbage for sour cabbage leaves. Right next to that are these little tiny purple cabbages. I had zero purple cabbage, the Rondale Red come up, so I reseeded on April 7th. SH is Sweet Heat Peppers. I seeded them February 19th. They're pretty small, but I guess peppers are a slow growing thing. And I got some sickly looking tomatoes next to them. I had trouble with tomatoes this year. Every year my tomatoes, they turn purple and it doesn't bother me. It's from a lack of phosphate, I guess, phosphorus. I don't know if you can see, there's some remnants of purple leaves here. They were really bad this year. They look quite sickly. Never had that trouble before. Here's a really bad one. You can see the leaves are shriveled up. Anyway, they, they look a little better now. They're not so purple. Because they were so purple, my wife bought this miracle Grow. I'm not a big fan of miracle Grow, that type of stuff, but uh, it certainly helped. It, it, it's high in the mid-ingredient is phosphate, phosphorus, which is the, the cause of purple tomatoes. Normally, I don't get too excited if they're purple, they usually come out, come around and come out of it, but the leaves were dying off, so I opted to do that. I could have did compost tea, I guess, but this is way easier. And this has got micronutrients as well. So, it worked. Broccoli, I got six of those. Came up out of eight. Seeded March 24th. Here's some more tomatoes. These ones are looking a little better. We still got some remnants of purple leaves there. You can see the one leaf. But they're doing good. They'll be alright. I give away uh, half my tomatoes. I kept six each. I don't know what's what anymore with the tomatoes, but I know that I'm going to plant them all out, so it doesn't really matter. I got four sunflowers here. Those, those are for the kids. I'm going to put them along the garage. They're the giant sunflower type, I believe. Next to them, I've got my celery. It's quite root bound, I'm sure. But I have no intention of transplanting this into bigger pots. I'm just going to plant it out. I'll just have to water the heck out of it and keep it from dying in the next two weeks. And let's see, here next we got more tomatoes. I got 18 tomatoes I'm going to plant out this year. And these are four cabbages, and they turn purple as well. And I don't know whether maybe one of you guys out there in YouTube land can... Maybe they turn purple for the same reason as tomatoes turn purple. Here. You can see a slight purplish tinge. I, I was thinking they were a purple cabbage for a while. The guy that gave me these cabbages said that his weren't turning purple so maybe it's a lack of uh, phosphorus as well the same as the tomatoes I don't know if somebody knows let me know anyway I'll keep I'll maybe give them the tomato food as well see if that works 
And of course I've got this pepper was seeded. This was the only one that came up from my own seed from last year. That was uh, February 10th. And then in behind it, RS's Red Start peppers. And these ones were seeded February 19th. Next to the Red Start is Cajun Bell. I got four of them seeded at the same time. And some good looking tomatoes over there. The one on the outside I've got a stick in it, it's Roma. Last but not least I've got my four Princeton cabbages. Those are a late season cabbage out there on the outside. They're in the full sun right now. Uh, this is the morning sun. But later in the day they'll be shaded by the tomatoes. And what I've done here is I've staggered the tall versus the short thing. So I've got the short cabbages, then I've got the taller tomatoes, the shorter peppers cabbages and then the taller tomatoes again and then the celery is in a little bit shadier region. I find that that gives everybody a little bit more space to grow and twist in the wind and toughen up. Here's my pathetic looking lettuce that I seeded April 11th. A lot of it damped off. It was in the house. It damped off under the dome and died. Yesterday I was out transplanting stuff and it was out in the hot sun and it dried out and stuff it just looks terrible but I'm still gonna transplant it here soon and today I'm gonna maybe direct seed some lettuce here's what the garden looks like after all the snow finally melted most of the garlic has come up now first two rows are garlic or sorry the back two rows are garlic the first row is bulbils None of the bulbils have come up, and I don't know if they will, but... And I, plant, I planted four types of garlic here a couple of years ago, and then I've reseeded. I've got Leningrad, Northern Quebec. You can see I'm in the sh shadows here, but i got a good catch on those two. Third type is Costin's Red Russian. That's a nice red marbled garlic. And Ukrainian Mavnev. So I got a good catch on the Costin's Red Russian. It's in the middle row. And then I got about half of the Ukrainian Mavnev. Now down at this end of the garden, there's a little less germination so far, but this was covered in snow a lot longer than the rest. So that's how we're doing. So I guess overall, I probably got about 80%, 90% germination. Spent like two hours repotting things yesterday. This time of the year the pots are getting bigger and bigger and there's less and less room in the greenhouse. So I've decided that I'd like to add some brackets here and maybe put some shelves so that I can have flats um, not laying all over the ground. So you can see I got the brackets and I could put another set down lower closer to the bottom and I'll get some uh, pressure treated plywood and put it there and then I can put some things outside instead of having them scattered all over on the ground I can put them up on shelves another thing I want to do today is I've got this shelf that I was using in the kids room in the winter I want to take and put casters on the bottom so that I can wheel it in and out of the garage easy and I can load it up with the plants too okay so there's a shot of the shelf with casters on it now I can wheel it in the garage at night so nobody steals it and I can wheel it around out of the wind or into the shade as I require. So here's what the shelves look like. There's not much to it, just the brackets and uh, I got the half inch plywood cut. And I got my tomatoes and peppers sunning themselves on the west side there and got room for some stuff there. And of course there's room for a shelf on the bottom there and there I guess. You could put it tight and it would be shaded or lower would be in the sun. So today hopefully it'll be dry enough. It wasn't dry enough yesterday for sure, but it was such a nice day. It uh, should be dry enough to get in. I want to get in there and seed some radishes and some lettuces and some broad beans maybe. Get the gardening season started hopefully today. I've decided to use this five horse cultivator. I've got a smaller one. It's a newer one. It's a still. 
but I prefer this one. I can do this bed in about five minutes with it, whereas it might take like 15 with the other one. And this one goes quite a bit deeper. I haven't, uh, haven't started it at all. My parents bought this thing when I was uh, about, I don't know, five, five, six years old. It's been parked all winter. It's got some old gas in it. I should see if there's some oil in it. I never changed the oil last fall. I better put some oil in this thing. I just used 10W30. There's a rubber diaphragm in here. We had it apart four or five, ten years ago, my dad and I. It, uh, it's kind of getting more rigid. It's not very supple. Um, that's why I got to have the fuel tank pretty much half full. I think that my theory is is that if it's at least half full you got enough pressure in the fuel to to get it running anyway this is the first time I've started it since October we'll see how it goes I predict first or second full anyway I'll rotivate and uh, we'll talk in a minute just a quick shout out to Mark at Grooves Me. Mark, this is why I can't grow radishes. I don't know whether this is going to show up in the sun, but it's very black dirt, very uh, nutrient rich. And the radishes like to have big tops and no bulbs underneath, but I try every year and I'll do again this year. Here's that very same pot, it's a 10 inch pot for reference. I like to throw stones down and that way I can get in here anytime even after I just watered. Man, I don't have to get all muddy. Anyway, I like to plant in this bed um, everyday stuff stuff that I don't have to uh, go out into the other garden, the garden proper. are in a totally different fashion than they were last year and they'll be different again next year. If I did herbs I would put them here. Other than dill I don't do herbs. But I like to put some of the things that'll tolerate shade a little bit here. I'm gonna put some I'm gonna do my my broccoli, at least some of them here. So here's a sketch of what I <clears throat> plan on doing this year. Every year I make a sketch and of course it never exactly turns out the way I plan but you can see I'm planning on putting fava beans and celery in the corner there. I'm going to put dill on the left here and today I'm going to seed some radishes and Swiss chard and some lettuce. I'm going to put beets up against the house. And I'm going to put zucchini over here that'll kind of soften the look of the corner of the house. And then over here later on I'm going to put broccoli and radicchio and bok choy. And I'm going to try and maybe put some netting over that to keep the moths off. And I'm going to seed some bunching onions somewhere in here today too. So in the big garden I like to uh, use a string line to mark my rows. In the small garden here I just use a rake. Step on it. That makes a little hole. So I need about eight rows here in total. I'll make six today.
Anyway, by pushing in the rake, I've made my own little furrows. All I gotta do is drop the seeds in and fill it in. So anyway, here's what the mescaline mix looks like. This is the There's a lettuce mix and a greens mix. And the lettuce mix has pak choy, spinach, mustard spinach, mizuna spinach, mustard greens, whole bunch of stuff. So anyways, last year I didn't read the instructions. There's two packets of, of different mix. There's a lettuce mix and a greens mix and the lettuce mix takes longer to germinate and that's what I've planted today and then I'll wait two weeks and I'll plant the greens mix. So I've got a romaine type lettuce called Triton. It's a 75 day lettuce. I've never bought pelleted seed before. If you haven't, here's what the pellets look like. A lot easier to seed these than the very tiny lettuces. So that's kind of neat. Okay, so here's what I got. I got some radishes there short little row there. Next to them I've got some more radishes. Those are Valentine from Stokes. Behind them I've got Mescaline Part 1. And of course in the shade I've got my Grand Rapids lettuce. Back there, you can see I got some broad beans. I'm going to push those in. I got my pelleted seed. This is my romaine type lettuce. Oh no, that's my Swiss chard. So I got a three foot row of chard. Seeds from 2009. I seeded it heavy. Hopefully it'll come up. There's my pelleted seed. Romaine lettuce. Skip a row, that'll be for my part two of the mescaline mix. And then over on the far side I've got my row of heavily seeded bunching onions. And then on this side of the garden I will have my bok choy, radicchio, and my broccoli. And over there in the corner, right over there is where I'll throw my zucchini. And that little block over there is where I'm going to throw my beets. So it's just before 4 o'clock in the afternoon and you can see the shade is already coming in. So that's why I like to put some of the things that tolerate shade here. And the stepping stones of course are handy. I can reach with a rake for weeding, harvesting and whatever, even if the ground is wet. 